Hey, it's Leanne from LV Aesthetic. I am filming this video to update you on my progress on the Obagi New Derm system. So something interesting happened when I was cleansing in the shower because I decided I was going to omit showing you guys that step because it just takes time. Just used number one, the foaming gel. But remember that stupid plumping lip gloss that I tried? Well, I had it on my lips because I decided actually it does work a little bit. And I was like, ooh, I got to like you know, I like it. And so I didn't take it off when I went into the shower and I thought I was washing around, but I definitely got gloss on a few areas of my face. It And I know that, that it, it's from the gloss. So definitely reactive, <laughs> definitely good to know and interesting. I'm not personally concerned about it because I tend to get things like this quite a bit. Um, so I know it'll go away, but, um, so just update on that stupid gloss. I actually kind of like it. So, um, I'm going to go over the AM routine of the, uh, Obagi New Derm system with you. So I already did the cleanse. So what I'm going to do now is use the toner. And what I'm hoping is that the toner will also help the red patches that, were brought on by the actives in the plumping gloss. Great, so that should actually help soothe it a bit. There is witch hazel in this toner and actually a lot of pretty good ingredients that I normally wouldn't buy like a fancy toner for myself alone, but this is like a good one. It has a lot of star ingredients, including witch hazel, aloe, uh, sodium PCA, which is really hydrating, panthenol, which is um, a form of vitamin B, um, allantoin, which is supposed to be really soothing. So I'm hoping that Actually, am I imagining it or is it already starting to, I don't know, it's going to take a little bit. Um, anyway, so actually, aside from the fragrance and a little bit of color, which a lot of um, cosmetics have, this is a really good toner, seemingly. I like it. Came in the kit. Um, I was too lazy to bring a chair in here and now I'm like, great, you can't even really see my face. Why don't we do this? Okay, that's better. Um, okay, so that was number two. Number three is Clear. It's called Clear, the product, and it is our first dose of our melanogenesis inhibitor. Um, it is hydroquinone. Um, hydroquinone is a very effective skin lightening agent. Um, it is also very controversial because of the effects that it has on the body over long-term use. However, apparently those studies have been somewhat inconclusive, so this might be something that you try and decide if this is right for you. Um, I have, my opinion of hydroquinone is that it works, so I'm for it, but I'm still gonna cycle off of it after I finish this. I'm not gonna continue to use hydroquinone all over my face and neck indefinitely. If I feel like I need to, I'll switch to a different mellow, not, um, tyrosinase inhibitor like kojic acid or a product that has um you know arbutin and licorice and you know more natural stuff in it but for now i'm definitely going to use the hydroquinone uh oops that's number five number three so yeah this is a four percent uh prescription only like i said i got this from the med spa so i guess that's why i could get it i've never actually looked to see if i could buy this kit retail because it's really expensive. So um, I guess we'll find out at the end of this if I think that it's worth it for myself. Um, I feel like it's going to be. But aside from the patches from the gloss that are pretty distracting, I've started to notice some peeling um, and things like that, which are normal side effects of using this system. So this is number three, the clear. You're supposed to use a little bit more than a pea-sized amount 
Um, so Lisa told me to do about this much. So from that first line of your finger to the edge. And what I do is I put it on my fingertips like this and then press it around and then I go right underneath my eyes to concentrate it a little bit because that's where the bulk of my hyperpigmentation is from a few different factors, the sun, post-inflammatory. And I also have some pigmentation down here by my chin that I think is melasma. But I know it's also a shadow created by the contours of my face. So it's a few things happening. So you want to avoid putting the bulk of the product in this area here because it can get really dry and flaky, which is why you start at the outside of your face and are supposed to blend in. Um, the way that I've been doing it has been working well for me so far. Oh, by the way, it's been two and a half weeks, mm, a little less than two and a half weeks. Um, I'm gonna try to make a video at least every two weeks. Um, the treatment of hyperpigmentation is a long game. So there's not too many effects as far as the pigmentation is concerned at this point. However, I have seen a few different effects, which I will explain in a minute. So next I'm putting on number four, it's the exoderm. And this is a leave-on exfoliator and once again gonna measure it out the same way as I did that first dose of hydroquinone and I don't have a lot of pigmentation on my neck that is visible yet but I bet it's there like if I took a woods lamp I I bet it's there it's on my face, and I don't really see why it wouldn't be on my neck, too. And I'm not gonna wait around to find out. Okay, so that's done the exoderm. So um, many of you may be thinking like, okay, you're putting on these products back to back. Like, aren't you supposed to wait some time in between? And uh, traditionally, everything I've been taught, yes. But we don't really have time for that in everyday life. Um, I think that if you can space out your skincare for certain ingredients, it's very advantageous, especially with retinol. Um, however, I was instructed that you can do this with this kit, so I'm assuming that it's chemically formulated to all be cohesive, even if we apply them back to back to back. You know, um, that's the way they designed it and how I've been being instructed, so. That's the way I'm going to do it. Um, so next is a moisturizer because we skipped number five. That's just a PM step. Um, and so the Obaji Hydrate. This is all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like blown away by this moisturizer by any means. I don't have too much to say on it specifically. Um, I do also use the Obaji Lux night cream moisturizer because I was going through a really dry phase and I feel like that's a super nice moisturizer and I really like that for like to use once in a while for my skin using it solely would be kind of heavy I have like oily combination skin which until recently I was almost in denial of because I had my skin maintained so well but I'm still oily I'm oily, I have large follicles, it's a problem. <sighs> but you know, that's okay because uh, this kit is actually formulated for oily uh, to normal skin and they also have a kit for dry to normal as well. Um, so this is the sunscreen that they provided that I've been using and I don't like it. I suspect that this is part of the reason I'm getting a lot of comedones. Um, and and even some push tools and I've also been getting a lot of papules and there's been a lot of textural problems since I started using this um, kit so a few days ago I actually did take a break and did not use this and I did a light enzyme peel because the congestion was just driving me crazy and I do remember breaking out in a lot of papules which are um, small bumps with no whitehead um, the last time I was on hydroquinone. So I'm like, is it that? Or is it just the fact that my 
skin is adapting to this new product and there's a lot of cell turnover. I'm being more consistent than I have been and this is part of it. I'm sure it's like, I'm sure it's a, a myriad of things, but either way I've decided after I did the um, enzyme, my skin looked great. Um, I left it on not very long, definitely um, less than usual and it burned. And I was like, ooh, I don't know if I should tell people to do this, but upon further realization, after noticing the effects of my skin and how it looked after the enzyme, and then I just carried on with the system again the next day, I do recommend that. I mean, I don't really see the point in having no hyperpigmentation if my face is just full of acne also, right? Am I right? You know? And it's just like fun time in our lives where we can be getting all the first signs of aging and adult acne because sure why not so anyways um that was it except for the fact that i'm going to put on sunscreen and i'm going to use my elsa md sunscreen um that i have in the other room because i prefer it and i can so i'm going to do that um now i do have two three sunscreens by them actually one is the post procedure that i give to my clients um post microneedling and one is called Daily, which has um, hyaluronic acid in it. Um, and I find it gives my skin a nice glow, is hydrating, and it doesn't have a white cast. I also use their Clear, which has niacinamide in it, which I'm not going to use while using this because I already know my skin and I know it's gonna be too reactive with it and I'm gonna turn really, really red. Um, so I try to use the Clear when I can, but I also know that I, oh my God, just touched my eyebrow. I know that I'm trying to not get these products near my permanent makeup and too near, but I do know that even if I'm putting it here, it's gonna seep down and I'm just gonna need more touch-ups, period, on my permanent makeup because of the skincare that I use. So that's something to be aware of too. But what, like, gotta live, you know? Like, I'm not gonna not have it. Like, everything's hard and annoying. Like, choose your hard and annoying, right? So, um, it's not even hard. Like, it's like the biggest first world thing I've said in a while. Uh, okay. So, anyways, um, I do want to go more in depth to, uh, with the star ingredients in these products, which I think I will do on another episode. I'm going to take you through the night routine as well. And then, um, we'll talk about the ingredients in each product. I know we talked about the toner a little bit and hydroquin um, hydroquinone a little bit. Um, but I want to go through all of those and also talk to you about the retinoids that I have, which ones I use right now, and why. Um, and I I have a lot of ideas for some some really good um, things that I want to tell you guys. Like I want to uh, pH test all these products too, so we can talk about that and how treating skin is really about balancing skin and um, that is how you create skin health is you you know you treat you treat to balance you don't want if you're treating acne you don't want to over dry the skin because that might be our first you know go to or like oh there's oil get rid of the oil but in reality over stripping the skin and removing the acid mantle or its barrier function actually is detrimental um, and can breed bacteria and cause more acne and more oil production and just be the opposite of what we were going for and that's why it's really important to balance the skin and to know the ph balance of your products so that you can kind of in your head balance that um to keep your skin happy and healthy and i'm actually really interested to see i haven't done this yet at all and i, I don't know what the ph of these products are um however that's actually one of the main functions of toner is to bring your face back to um back to its ph balance after cleansing so i'm kind of wondering what my the ph of my skin is right now before i put the sunscreen on i i can't even speculate <laughs> to be honest so i'll have to let you guys know about that next time um let me know if there's anything you really want me to go over about the Abaji New Derm system that I haven't yet said I would go over. And thank you for, oh look, the red spots are almost totally gone. Yay. Um, thank you for uh, 
tuning in and listening to my experience and I will talk to you soon.